Hi all, welcome to new video. Today, May 30 is observed as World Multiple Sclerosis Day. It is to raise the awareness about the disease multiple sclerosis, to share the stories of the patients with multiple sclerosis, to have a campaign with the patients. So what is multiple sclerosis? Multiple sclerosis is a chronic demyelinating disorder or a disease affecting the central nervous system. That is the brain and the spinal cord. It affects the age group of 20 to 40 years. Females being more affected than males with a ratio of 3 is to 1. Okay. The cause is not known. The etiology found to be is either it, either it can be genetic factors or environmental factors. Genetic factors may, mainly the gene is HLA BR2 gene is associated with the genetic factor. What is told to? Environmental factors can be vitamin D deficiency, Epstein Barr virus, obesity, etc. This, this is the etiology what is suggested to be. Okay, the cause is not known, that is the main thing. Pathologically, pathologically, it is a demyelinating disease. What is demyelinating or what demyelination? We have a myelin sheath protecting the neural tissue or the neurons for everyone. For each and every nerve cell, there is a protecting uh, layer or protecting sheath, you can say, known as myelin sheath. There is a loss of myelin sheath or a damage in the myelin sheath in this particular disease. That's why it is a demyelinating disease. Immune destruction of oligodendrocytes. That is one of the pathological features you can see. You can see multiple plate formation. Formation of tissue scar. That's a highlighted feature, pathological feature in multiple sclerosis. Formation of tissue scar. Multiple plaques seen, especially in the white matter. Okay, Gray matter is also found to be, but the white matter is the main area. You can see multiple plaque formation. The formation of tissue scar. The highlighted feature of multiple sclerosis. Also, there is an increased permeability in the blood-brain barrier where the CD4 T cells. There is a cross-reactive of CD4 T cells taking place. Outside in hypothesis. This hypothesis is known as outside in hypothesis. So increased permeability of blood-brain barrier is also a pathological feature you can see in multiple sclerosis. Uh, this inflammatory response, obviously, as a part of inflammatory response post-infection, you can see this particular thing. That's increased permeability of the blood-brain barrier. Now, what are the signs and symptoms regarding the multiple sclerosis? It can affect the motor. It can affect the cognitive function, it can affect the sensory function, it can affect visual function. So what are the motor deficits you can see, motor dysfunction, what, what affects the motor disturbances you can see is tremors can be seen, spasticity can be seen, weakness of the muscles can be seen as a motor uh, deficit or motor disturbances. What are sensory disturbances you can see is paresthesia, tingling sensation, numbness, hypothesia that can be seen. These are the symptoms as Sensory disturbances. One more important thing to say about uh, multiple sclerosis is you can see one sign named as Lermite sign. L H E R M I T T E approximate comma as Lermite sign. What what the patient feels that there is an electric shock passing when the neck is flexed. The electric shock passing behind in the on the back of the body when the neck is flexed. So electric shock felt on the back of the body when the neck is flexed. That is a Lermite sign. That is also a particular sign you see in multiple sclerosis patients. Now, visual disturbances. Main thing you can see, it can lead to optic neuritis. You can have pain in the eyes, diplopia. What about bulbar? Bulbar disturbances means it can lead to dysarthria. You can have dysarthria, dysphagia, dysphasia, difficulty in speaking, difficulty in swallowing. All those things can happen. Difficulty in speech, swallowing, and these things can happen as a part of bulbar deficits. Also, cognitive impairment. I told you cognitive impairment is the main feature. Also, it, if it worsens again and again, it can go to a later say depressive stage. Uh, it can go to even worse conditions. Okay, it can even lead to death. There are people having uh, diagnosed with MS, means short form of multiple sclerosis. They can live up to 25 to 30 years. It's found to be 25 to 30 years they can live. As there is no cure properly, but they can they go up to 25-30 years after even diagnosing multiple sclerosis. So these are signs and symptoms what I uh, what comes in multiple sclerosis. What are types of multiple sclerosis? The types of multiple sclerosis mainly you can categorize into many types. Mainly the first one you can take into consideration is clinically isolated multiple sclerosis. Clinically isolated multiple sclerosis that you have to as I told the symptoms and signs basically based on the motor disturbances, sensory disturbances the bulbar disturbances, visual disturbances, based on that, like motor uh, deficits or motor or sensory disturbances can be 50 percentage. So clinically isolated multiple sclerosis in that 50 percentage can be motor or sensory disturbances, 20 percent can be optic neuritis, 10 percent can be brainstem affected, brainstem lesions, okay, and the other 20 percentage can be combination of all the, any, any of this. So this is the 
things what we see in clinically isolated multiple sclerosis multiple sclerosis the common type the second type what i am going to say the common type is the relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis rrms relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis which accounts about 80 percentage of the multiple sclerosis is relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis what do you come across common the symptoms deteriorate again and again there is no new activity forming it's like a uh like a step like you said relapsing and remitting relapsing remitting relapsing remitting okay like a step it is goes goes so this is deteriorating of symptoms with no new activity found relapsing remitting multiple sclerosis then comes a primary progressive multiple sclerosis we have we have secondary progressive multiple sclerosis fulminant multiple sclerosis all those things we have uh in coming in different types of uh, multiple sclerosis These are different types of multiple sclerosis. So the most common you can see is relapsing, remitting multiple sclerosis. Now, what are the investigations? How can you diagnose the multiple sclerosis? You can diagnose. There is no proper single test. You can say the first primary thing you can do is you can take an MRI of brain. MRI of brain shows multiple plaques. The tissue scar. I told you there is a formation of tissue scar. It forms as multiple plaques can be seen in the white matter. When you take an MRI scan, you can see multiple plaques seen in the white matter. Then you can do a CSF study. You can do a CSF oligoclonal uh, body. I uh, mean, uh, oligoclonal bands. You can see CSF study. Oligoclonal bands can be see. CSF study can be done. Lumbar puncture can be done, and CSF, CSF can be done. And CSF study can be done as a part of multiple sclerosis. Also, you can see the formation of auto antibodies in this. Other thing you can see is uh, the test you can do is visual evoked potentials. Visual evoked potentials. You can have it as a visual evoked potentials too, because it also affect the visual. disturbances can be seen optic neuritis the proprioceptors can be seen to know about the visual impairment you can have a visual evoked potentials the stimulus going the action potentials all those things can be recorded by visual evoked potentials uh, these are some of the diagnosis or investigations you can do there is no single test for uh, multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease again antibodies auto antibodies there many uh, test has to be done mainly mri you can confirm that the plaques are there in the white matter most probably it is the multiple sclerosis okay coming to the treatment i told you there is no specific treatment for multiple sclerosis there is no cure for multiple sclerosis but you can give uh, drugs like corticosteroids you can give cyclophosphamide immunosuppressants monoclonal antibodies plasma pharesis can be done plasma exchange can be done plasma pharesis these are some of the things interferons interferon uh, can be given monoclonal antibodies Uh, chemotherapy is also given nowadays then based on the symptoms treating the symptoms there if a depression you have to uh, find and you can have give antidepressants for that so there are multiple things and the main thing uh, main symptom common thing what is is fatigue pain and fatigue fatigue is a common thing you can see fatigue you cannot directly tell fatigue is because of this but this the common thing what we see in patient is fatigue so the symptoms what is their symptoms according to symptoms you can manage so there this are different type of treatment you can see not say as a single medication is there